Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're addressing the various parables of Jesus, which are contained in the Gospels. And this week, the parable of the unjust steward, which is found in the Gospel of Luke. This parable itself isn't too long, but it contains an explanation of what it means, which will take a bit longer to go over, so let's take a look. And he said also to his disciples, There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. Luke 16, 1 As we discussed in episode 544 about the faithful servant, a steward is someone working in a large household or estate to manage domestic concerns, such as the supervision of servants, collection of rents, and keeping of accounts. The second definition of butler is essentially the same thing. They have no ownership rights over the household or the property, but they do have and exercise authority over the other servants. At this point, the parable tells us that this steward had been accused of being wasteful with the goods of his employer, like buying a lot of expensive wines for himself to drink with his employer's money or something like that. It doesn't say here whether the accusation was true, but the parable later refers to him as an unjust steward, so we can assume that if the accusation wasn't true, then he'd probably done something else that was just as bad or even worse. And he called him and said to him, How is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account of thy stewardship, for now thou canst be steward no longer. Luke 16.2 The boss wants an explanation from this man about how he's been using his goods, but in any case, it looks like the steward is going to lose his position no matter what happens. There's no ambiguity in that last statement. And the steward said within himself, What shall I do? Because my lord taketh away from me the stewardship. To dig I am not able. To beg I am ashamed. I know what I will do. That when I shall be removed from the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. Luke 16, 3-4 the steward is in a tight spot because he's about to be out in the open job market again without the skills or stamina needed to make a living digging for minerals and too proud to take up begging in the street. With a rough future potentially on the horizon, he comes up with a plan to ingratiate himself to the people who owe his employer money. Therefore, calling together every one of his lord's debtors, he said to the first, How much dost thou owe, my lord? But he said, A hundred barrels of oil. And he said to him, Take thy bill, and sit down quickly, and write fifty. Then he said to another, And how much dost thou owe? Who said, A hundred quarters of wheat. He said to him, Take thy bill, and write eighty. Luke 16, 5-7 He's already being punished for being wasteful, so he uses the resources left to him to reduce a bunch of debts that other people owe, hoping that they'll be grateful to him. It's not clear from this parable whether he plans for his boss not to find out about this, though the word quickly in these verses does seem to indicate that he was trying to keep it a secret, but in any case, his boss does find out, and actually, the Lord commended the unjust steward, for as much as he had done wisely, for the children of this world are wiser in their generation than the children of light. Luke 16, 8 Although he was still wasting his employer's resources, and his actions had mainly been selfishly motivated, the reality was that he'd done something to help other people. It was a smart move, and his employer recognizes that. Though it doesn't say that he got his job back or anything like that, the fact that his employer congratulates this man for doing something that in no way benefited him indicates that he's a fair person with a logical mindset, and isn't merely acting selfishly to protect his own interests. And I say to you, Make unto you friends of the mammon of iniquity, that when you shall fail, they may receive you into everlasting dwellings. Luke 16, 9 Mammon of iniquity refers to possessions gained through dishonest means, or, in a larger sense, earthly wealth as a whole. Because it doesn't last, it has very little value in the long term, so using it to help others is much better than just clinging to it until it can't do anyone any good. Like this steward, we too will ultimately lose our position here on earth, and therefore we should also be planning ahead for our ultimate fate. In addition, there's a very clear indication here that doing good things for others in this life will help us to reach heaven in the next. It's quite possible that the saints in heaven offer special help and prayers for those who helped them in this life, or something else like that. In any case, sacrificing for the sake of others is an action that's valued by God, even if no one else appreciates it. 
and even if, as with the steward himself, our motivations may not be the most selfless ones. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in that which is greater, and he that is unjust in that which is little is unjust also in that which is greater. Luke 16.10 The meaning of this verse is muddied a bit by the fact that we've apparently been talking about a person who was fired for being unjust. However, it's a good thing for him to be generous to others, and that's actually more, not less, responsible. Jesus is saying that by being responsible with the good things God gave us in this life, we can be given greater goods in heaven, while an evil or wasteful person will continue to be evil or wasteful, regardless of how much money they have. Making a lot of money doesn't change your character for the better. If, then, you have not been faithful in the unjust mammon, who will trust you with that which is the true? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? Luke 16, to 12 People who refuse to help others with their goods have little hope for a heavenly inheritance. Earthly wealth is meager by comparison to the riches of heaven, but if a person is tight-fisted and miserly with their goods in this life, what would be the point of giving them greater goods? We see this all the time with the very rich who complain about others not taking care of the big problems in society, but who refuse to put their own money towards actual workable solutions. A person who clings to money as a store manager will probably also cling to money as an executive, and their business would stagnate as a result, to say nothing of probably not earning much goodwill from their customers. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Luke 16.13 Again, mammon refers only to the perishable riches of earth. Wealth in heaven is endless, and possessing it always coincides with a good relationship with God. Jesus is saying that our heavenly fate, which God wants for us, needs to take precedence over earthly prosperity. In cases where the two conflict, and in ancient Jerusalem the two frequently conflicted. There were lots of poor, blind, and lame people who needed help, and a fair number of wealthy traders, priests, and tax collectors who weren't too concerned with helping them. Wealth exists for the benefit of everyone, not just the person who owns it. Just because someone has legal ownership rights over a piece of property doesn't mean they have no moral obligations in terms of how they use it. If our friend or neighbor tells us that they don't have enough to feed their kids this week, and we have enough extra food to help them out, we should, because it's the right thing to do, and it improves our relationship with God to do what's right. It would almost certainly also improve our relationship with our friend, which could be a good thing too. You never know when they might need to help us out with time, effort, possessions, or even prayers on our behalf. Sometimes that can make all the difference. So why not prepare for that, just in case? Next, Lazarus and the Rich Man. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.